Hi, so for this tutorial today we're going to take a look at how to manage saved locations in TPE on uh, iOS. Um, I'm going to use the iPad that's running in the simulator here in the video uh, just to make things nice and clear on the screen but everything I say applies equally to um, TPE when it runs on iPhone or on your iPod Touch. So we're looking here at uh, the default view in landscape uh, when TP is first installed, it comes with just one sample location, Timbuktu, uh, which you see here in the list. So you bring this up in iPad on this button here on the toolbar at the top. It uh, has done its own dedicated tab uh, down at the bottom of the screen on, on iPhone. Pretty hard to miss. Um, the first thing to remember, just like the desktop app, <coughs> not every place that you search for is necessarily a place that you want to save. So think of locations in this list as really your saved locations. These are places you potentially want to come back to in the future. To find a place, you simply click in the uh, search bar here. There is a button on, on the iPhone. There's a button just here for search. It brings up a similar looking um, uh, tool where you can type in the, the name or the place of a town. So let me type Newcastle upon Tyne, back in the UK, where I grew up, uh, as an example. So we type that in, uh, the program goes off and finds that and drops the pin right in the middle of Newcastle, as you can see. So <clears throat> that's a very simple way to find a place. Let's say we want to save this for future use. Come to the locations, click plus, and what's, what's happening here is that when you add the location, the, lo the coordinates it's using are the coordinates of the red pin, the primary pin. So whenever you click add a location, that's that's the location it's going to use by default. It's come up here with a default name because that was the last search term we used and we haven't moved that pin since we conducted the search. So it thinks that's probably going to be a good term to use for, as a default name. But of course you can change that. You can change that to, to whatever you like. So I can add UK. Um, save that and there we go it's saved. It saves the coordinates, it saves the time zone, although you, you can't see that here, and it saves the elevation above above sea level. So we can go to Timbuktu, or we can go back to Newcastle. Simple as that. Um, let's do another example. Let's use this button here, which is the go to current location. That's the current location of the device. Um, now in the simulator, that always defaults to Apple headquarters. So there's the little blue indicator showing that's where the device is located. Um, this is, you can ignore this, this is just the last search term that we used, it's it's no longer relevant. Um, but it sits there until you conduct another search. However, we've relocated here to California. I come back here, I do plus. This time we didn't have a search so it doesn't give a default name, but it shows the nearest address uh, underneath here and if you, you click on that it just cycles through a few variants and they get shorter. So let's use that one, Cupertino, and we can save that and there we go. So we can go back to Newcastle or we can come over to Cupertino. Um, you can edit these locations when you click edit. You can tap there and you get back in here. That lets you change the name. You can override the coordinates. So if you have coordinates that you want to enter, just add a location and type in your own coordinates. They basically just change the, the coordinates that are, that are the default, which is where the red pin is, and replace them with whatever whatever you want. Um, and there are a couple of other functions here where you can go to whatever coordinates you put in, or you can reset it to use the primary pin coordinates. So that's uh, creating and editing locations. You might also have seen there that we can delete locations. You can also do that with just a swipe. Uh, that applies to any of these table views that you see in, in iOS apps. Generally you can swipe to, to delete. So I'll delete that one. And there we go. <clears throat> Let's say we wanted to back these locations up or we wanted to uh, share them, we transfer them to another device. Let's say you want, had them on your iPad, you wanted to move them to your iPhone. First thing you need to do is to get them out of uh, this device here. So the simple way to do that is click on the action button here that brings up this export locations option. We tap that and it conda it creates a, a blank email ready to send uh, subject TP exported locations and it's attached um, a KML file there. 
Now if you've watched the first part of this Managing Locations tutorial series you'll be familiar with KML. That's the format that uh, the desktop app can import and export. So you can send this email to yourself, type in address, click send, um, type in a message here if you want, and then open that file, uh, download it to your desktop and then import it into uh, TP on, on the desktop. Or you can import it into Google Earth, etc, etc. Et There's a whole bunch of apps and programs out there that can read uh, this KML format. I'm going to cancel out of that, um, delete the draft. What we'll do now, I'm going to switch over to uh, Google Earth. So let me just find that. Here we go. Google Earth. And what I'm going to show you now is um, how you can get locations into TP uh, on the iPad or the iPhone, again using KML or indeed using another format, KMZ. Uh, or KMZ. Um, if you're familiar with Google Earth, you'll probably know that you can have folders, collections of saved locations, similar to, to how TPE does it, but you can you can create your own folders here. So what I'm going to do, just to work through an example, uh, I've got a collection here of three locations in England. Let's add another one. I'm going to search for uh, Bamborough. Here we go. It's found it up on the northeast coast. This is north of Newcastle. And if you're familiar with Bamborough, you may know that there is a rather spectacular castle located just here. Uh, I've used this location in some other tutorials as well. Um, let's see if maybe one of these has a picture of the castle so you can see it. There it is. Bamber Castle. So that's probably, if you're a photographer living in Northumberland, um, this is highly likely to be a place that you would go and visit at some point. So let's add a pin for that. Bamber Castle. Done. Um, that's close enough. Uh, that, so that was using that add place mark tool that uh, um, we used in the, in the first part of the tutorial. So I've created I've dropped the pin. It's showing up in my list of places. I'm going to drag and drop that into the photo locations um, folder. I'll just expand that a little so you can see what's in there. There we go. Now, let's say we want to transfer these locations over to uh, TPE on the iPad. Well, the first thing you need to do is to work out how do I export them out of Google Earth. If you tap on the or click on the folder, uh, do a right click and click email what that does, there we go, it brings up similarly to how you export locations from uh, TP on the iPad, it brings up an, a draft email with a KMZ file attached. You can email that to yourself and open it uh, on the iPad. Now I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to close this draft. In the simulator which I'm using uh, for this video, the mail app that you have on, on your iPad or your iPhone isn't installed. so what we'll do, I'll show you a couple of screenshots that I took earlier just so you get an idea of how this, this looks. So this is, um, let me just zoom that, here's mail on the iPad, there's the KMZ file that I'd sent from Google Earth, that's the same email you saw before. Uh, you would touch that file there and then you will get something that looks similar to this where in iOS 6 you have a pop-up um, that shows you a list of apps that are able to deal with that file type, this KMZ file type. One of them is TP. Um, on iOS 5, I think what happens is you'll you'll get a button somewhere up here that does open with or open in, something like that. But it's it's similar approach. Once you tap open in TPE, then it will switch over and and Im import the, uh, the the locations in this file. So let's do that now. Um, I'm going to go back to the simulator and I'm going to come out here. What you can also do, it doesn't just mean that you can open from um, uh, from the mail app, you can also open any KML or KMZ page that's file that's stored on, on a web page. So what I've done here, I've just uploaded it temporarily, um, seeing as I didn't have the, the mail app installed, and I can open the file, uh, the KMZ file in TP. So I'll tap that switches over. It says, would I like to import the locations from this file? They'll be added to your locations list. So yes. Importing. Four new locations were imported. Okay. 
Let's go have a look. And there we are, Bamber Castle, Derwentwater, Gordelscar and Malham in North Yorkshire. So let's go to Bamber Castle. And there it is. Um, very simple. So that's a nice way for you to work in either TP for desktop or Google Earth. Um, email the KML or the KMZ placemark file to you, an account you can get to on your iPhone or your iPad. Open the file, import, and you'll get your locations here in TPE. Equally, we can then re-export re this whole list uh, as I showed you earlier. Lastly, I'm going to come back. You may recall from um, the first part of the video, we'd worked in TP for Desktop. Here's the desktop app, and we'd imported a whole load of uh, locations in and around New Zealand um, from a KML file that I located on the on the web. Um, you can, as I showed you in that video, you can export these locations, so I can select a bunch of them, export them. And what I've done this time, uh, back to here's the simulator, I uploaded that KML file to um, a web page. I can open that in TPE. Very similar approach as we did for the Google Earth file. Do I want to import the KML? Yes. And we got 60 new locations, so a whole bunch of good stuff to go visit. So one thing just to be aware of, it's a it's a minor point, but important if you are potentially using the app offline where you don't have any uh, network connectivity. When you import the locations from the desktop app, or if you import them from um, Google Earth, they don't come with the time zone and the elevation above sea level already uh, worked out. So you can see that in this one. Here, Newcastle upon Tyne, which we searched for in the app, has been saved with the uh, the elevation. Um, Malum, which we imported from Google Earth, has not. So if you want to use that location offline, it's good to have both the elevation and the time zone stored so the app doesn't uh, need to make some assumptions or um, ask you for the time zone, for example. But you can very easily update that, go into edit, open it. It goes off and finds the time zone and the elevation when you edit it, resave it, and there it is uh, with, with the elevation. So that's it. Um, quick recap of what we've looked at today. We looked at how to search for a place by name, how to add locations, how to edit locations, how to export them, how to import them from Google Earth, which is as simple as opening a KML or a KMZ file from an email or from a web page. And then finally, how to make sure that you update those locations with the altitude and time zone, or elevation and time zone, if you happen to be planning to work offline. So that's it for now. I hope that's been useful. Thanks for watching.